Now, we were talking about lineups before where we have Mahomes and Garoppolo at the top, and there we probably need a value play. I think you could live with, like, Emmanuel Sanders and Debo Samuel, but if you want to dip down lower, Miko Hardman is, is really attractive for the reasons discussed before with Tyreek Hill and the speed, because if you look back at that conference championship game, Miko Hardman actually ran more routes than Demarcus Robinson. He was 19 to 16. He had only one target, but when Hardman is out there, they're getting him creative looks. They're getting him involved as a rusher. They're getting him involved as a wide receiver. And we know he can bust off a big play. He does not get enough volume for me to use him as my MVP, but as a $6,000 value play, where if you have him in there, it makes getting two guys like Tyree Kill a lot easier. I think that that is a really good situation. So among the plays who are like, Like, I'm going to toss out Emmanuel Sanders. He's 75. I want to make the cutoff there. Lower than $7,500, I think Miko Harbin is in a tier of himself as a value play. When you're looking for a super cheap play for those Mahomes, Garoppolo, or Mahomes, Williams, Linus, Brandon, where does Miko Harbin grade out for you? You said below 75? Yes. Uh, He's got to be number one, right? I mean, nobody else really stands out. And... Look, Andy Reid's probably got something cooked up. Uh, he, like you said, he ran more routes uh, than Demarcus Robinson uh, in the conference championship. He outsnapped him barely, which was actually the the only time in the ten game sample with Kelsey Hill and and Watkins healthy that that actually happened. So it's pretty telling that it happened last week or two weeks. It whatever. happened the week after Robinson had like sixteen drops in the divisional <laughs> round. Like, yes. probably not a coincidence. So. Andy Reid's probably got something drawn up to get Miko Hardman one or two deep shots because he can can get he can break a play and yeah. I think that look if you're banking on what's most realistic what what's most likely it doesn't make sense to load up on Hardman but you put him in and he converts on one of those plays I mean that's that's how you have to think about a single game slate you can't just play the most balanced most obvious uh, lineup. Exactly. Um, And I think that's a big part of why Hardman makes a lot of sense, because if he does pay off, the upsides for you are huge. And I want to be okay thinking that way. And the other guys by him are like Kyle Juszczyk. Like, he could score a touchdown, but I don't honestly care that much. Um, He's a very good player. I just don't think he translates well for DFS. Darwin Thompson, they don't trust a whole lot. LaShawn McCoy, probably not going to be active. Uh, Well, he might be, but... So I think among the guys down here, Hardman is going to be popular because he is in a range that no one else is very attractive, but I don't think he'll be prohibitively so. So I like Mikkel Hardman a lot. And if we know that speed has been pretty dangerous against the 49ers this year, Andy Reid's going to know that too. Uh, So like you said, I would not be shocked if he were to cook something up. Uh, So Hardman, really fun for me.